Welcome back to Unlocked Crafts. I know you've been all waiting for this video for a while. I have finally completed the rice mosaic that we started. Tools that you will need are as of follows. You're going to need a rag, glue. I use Elmer's glue all, multi-purpose glue, not school glue. You're going to need colored rice, which I have a video of how to color your rice tweezers which you'll see me using a lot in the video. I have a splicer tool by Klein Tools but you can also use a sharp knife for the same purpose. You're going to need a board or a canvas. You're also going to need a blank, I mean an image to put onto your canvas. And you also of course you need your rice that you have colored already for your board and have it dried out to apply your rice onto there. By the way, just so you know, it has to be on cooked rice. It cannot be like minute rice, cannot be Uncle Ben's or any of that. It has to be on cooked rice. I've never bought the brown rice, but I'm sure you can use it if you wish. And I want to say thank you ahead of time because this is quite a long video for staying tuned. Uh, I will see you at the end of this video. Thank you. I don't do people and that's because I can't get the tones, skin tones correct. And I don't want to give a bad product to somebody. So I don't do people. I do, I can do um, animals, scenery, stuff like that. Now, and some of my boards you'll see outlining. Some of them you will not. This one has outlining because I want to have the deer outlined against the backdrop. I'm working on this board. I have another board that I'm working on and I'm working on a canvas. Oh yeah. I'm also working on an order for a customer, which I cannot show at this moment in time because it's a gift. I want to finish this board for everyone because this is a board that I showed on my original original rice mosaic uh, YouTube video of how I do my artwork. And I figured you guys deserve to see it completed very tiny but I want to fill it in so that there's no holes see right there you gotta use really tiny pieces of rice for that area so I just wanted to show you that that's how I get it out that's how I make it look so good there we go okay so back to work we go you can correct your mistakes on the on the boards but you cannot correct any mistakes on canvas you make a mistake on canvas you got to throw it out as far as I've found so far anyway because uh, canvas is porous you can't sand it down like you can wood so I haven't found a way to correct any mistakes other than throwing it out and wasting the doggone canvas. I stole the uh, cable splicers tool from Klein Tools from my husband. He had it for splicing cable. So, and this is that tool right here. If you guys want to see it, it's chipped so you can't use it for what you wanted it anyway. So, I use that and I use my sharp knife, so it works. So I'll continue to switch sides while one side dries the other side's going to get tackled and then when both sides are wet I'll go ahead and tackle the grass and this is going to go on until I get it completely done now, and of course I'll show you line it up right next to each other I try to make sure that the lines go the same way if I can. Depends on how the rice is cut, cut as well. 
And I know that you guys have been asking how I do more than one board at a time. And I'm going to show you with this part of the video how I do more than one. I'm working with the green grass today. I'm just There might be two more rows right there. It's a wide um, thing of, of uh, glue for us. So we'll get two rows down there. Hmm. There we go. See, there we go. Finish that row. When the rice starts moving around way too much for um, the section that you're working on, you can either switch, switch sections of where you're working so you don't mess up the rice that's wet, or you can switch boards, and that's how I go back and forth between the two. So there's your answer, Joe. Let's see, that's, there we go. need all the same supplies, the tweezers, the glue, the rice, the board, the rag. The rag is for wiping off your tweezers when it gets glue encrusted. Now once in a while, depends on your rag, there'll be little fuzzies on it so you want to scrape them off. And here we are working on this one now. Well that one dries a little bit. And that's how you switch between boards. Now this one happens to be canvas. The glue sticks as well to this one as it does to the boards. This one, however, if you make a mistake, you cannot correct it as far as I have found. This is only my second canvas, so I'm sure that there might be a way, but I'm not 100% positive because um, don't I know you can't sand it I know that for a fact because it'll ruin the canvas a little spot I'm gonna fill that in with small pieces of rice and of course I just flicked it over there so I'm not gonna worry about it too much You can either do this as you're laying your rice, or you can come back and look at your project and say, oh, this is a little hole, I gotta fill it in with this color. I do it this way, but I also, when I'm completely done, I will look over my, my board or my canvas and say, hmm, I missed a spot here, and then I'll fix it. Like right here. There's a spot that's missing. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there and find a small bit of rice. And put it right in there. And there we go. It's filled. And that's how you fill in the holes or canvas or wood, it doesn't matter which one you, you want to fill holes in, you have to do it the same way. And also, sometimes, okay, see that's going to be wet now, so we're going to put that aside while we work back on our deep. I'm going to be working with three color, three, four colors today. The, uh, I'm going to work with this here color, which is a grass color. Ah, let's show you. There we go. I'm going to work with the lime color today. I'm going to work with the sky color today as well. Let's move those up for us.
and I'm going to use the dark green for the leaves and I still have to fill in some leaves. So those are the four colors I'm going to be working with today. Because right now I'm working on the grass. And you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself with the gluey because it'll dry before you're ready to put the rice on it. So I only do like a section, you know, small little sections at a time. So it don't dry before I'm ready to put my rice on it. Because the grass is a little wet, so I'm just moving over where I'm not going to interfere with moving the rice. You want to always work on pretty much the opposite side of the board of where the wet rice is it, until you get down to where it's a very small area that you were working in then you have to actually put it aside and let it dry you already have your rice on your board and you realize oh I want to put a hanger on it put a soft towel thick soft towel under the board and then put your hanger on it because you don't want to uh, ruin your rice project your mosaic trust me I've done that before I'm just switching around what color I'm working on so you can tell the difference between the bushes the grass and the dark leaves from the trees so you want I, I want some small pieces to fill in this hole that I have here. So I'm going to cut a piece of rice with my splicer tool. You can use a sharp knife or whatever you have. As long as it's as long as it'll cut the rice, it'll be fine. And what I do is with the tweezers just now, I just pushed it down in between the two rice um, pieces where the blank should have gone. Because sometimes you want smaller pieces than what you already have. So I take the flat edge of this line tool, splicer tool, or you can shape, take your knife or whatever and just kind of roll it back and forth and it'll break up the rice. There we go. And I get my little piece that I want. And we're back at the green again. It's dry enough to go ahead and tackle this leaf again. Okay, as you can see, we are going to be finishing up my deer mosaic. And this is the last little bit that we have to finish. And you can see, of course, we're going to try to use, try to go the same way like we usually do one piece at a time you're going to be using your rag a little bit more often as you're finishing it up as you can see there's a little bit of gaps right in there where I will be using my Klein tool splicer knife to cut my rice. You don't have to get this meticulous about it. I just happen to be seeing these little holes, so I'm going to fill them in while I'm. I like to make sure all my gaps are filled in as much as possible completely done. Thank you for staying tuned to this project. I know it was a long one for you guys. I appreciate your time. Now we're going to do a sideway motion and up and down motion for the first coat. You want to coat all the rice. And that's what you do with the first coat. You let it dry for about two hours. 
and coat, if it needs a second coat, that's what I will do to it. And it's complete. I'm ready to go. It's protected. I only used one layer of the varnish that we were talking about right here, the Kelmar uh, varnish. You can get that from Michaels, Walmart, probably Hobby Lobby. Walmart doesn't always carry this, so I probably got this from Michaels because I shop there a lot. Thank you very much for staying tuned, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't hit, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button down below. And you have a great night, guys. Thank you for standing by, and thank you for your patience.